Welcome to part 15, a series step-by-step -step restoration, Singer Model 337. Today I wanted to work on the electrical uh, portions here. This was the whole harness that I pulled out before with the motor, the plug, switch, and uh, wire up to the light. I've got the parts of the light fixture uh, still, but all the dust and grease and grime and stuff that was uh, all over the machine, of course, is all over the electrical parts. So that's what I want to work on today. Um, for cleaning off the rest of this, I think I'll take one of those makeup remover pads and I will reuse my glove from the other day. Oop. One size doesn't fit anybody. Squeeze out some of the air. And I'll take my crud cutter and get some on this pad here and uh, I'll just start start wipe, wiping stuff down usually when I do this I'm going to leave some cotton threads behind here and there but my, my main purpose is to get the get most of the crud off of here so you use the crud cutter then I mean I either come back with a damp cloth or with a pad with alcohol or a cloth with alcohol and I clean off the crud cutter See if I can get some of these uh, cords here I hope in this series, if I have time, I'm going to include the cleaning and adjusting of the foot controller or the foot pedal and the cords, the three-way cord for the machine. And that's a lot easier than this because I can do it at the kitchen sink. But this I've never re really attempted at the, at the sink. It's just... I don't want to get any electrical stuff wet like inside the switch or inside the motor. Um, so that's why. Okay, I'm getting a lot of this grunge off here. Okay. So let me get rid of that. And let's see, I get my alcohol out here. And I think for this I'll take this cotton cloth and saturate it good with the alcohol and start wiping stuff down here. I'll show you once I get this uh, cleaned up better. I'll show you where the brushes are. And sometimes on the older machines that have had heavy use, I have uh, replaced the brushes. To me, if they have 60% more, 60% or more of their length left, I do not replace them. Brushes aren't expensive. The most expensive ones I ever had to buy were twenty dollars for a pair um, brushes for something like this can go as cheap as ten dollars a pair if I do buy them I, I try and look for some quality ones because the brushes in here um, you know my wife has an 80 year old machine that uh, still has about 20 percent of the original brushes left and the machine got uh, quite a bit of use from the two previous owners. 
a lady who bought it originally and then gave it to her daughter many years later who gave it to her daughter who didn't sew and sold it to us. So, so this alcohol, you could use a damp cloth for this, but I just want to get the crud cutter off of there. Uh, before I found the crud cutter, I would just do this all with alcohol, and it and it worked fine. It just uh, seemed to take longer, you know. So, and then uh, let me uh, a little Q-tip. No, take a little bit uh, more of the alcohol there and I'll get into a few tight spaces here around the pulley. I want to be sure that there's no um, debris from the from the motor belt from before and I'll clean this up a little bit. But overall this motor like the rest of the machine is in very good very good shape. Of fuzz off there. A little tight spot I see I missed around here. Go around the inside of the plug. You can see I'm getting some stuff off of there. The switch, the switch looked really good. Okay. Just gonna get most of the funky stuff off of there. Clean it up. Okay, so you can see these uh, square brass tubes here and with the wires going to it. Uh, inside that are the carbons and there's a little spring that pushes the, the carbon through there and uh, you can gently put a uh, something uh, like a little uh, toothpick or something and push back on the um, carbon and you can kind of tell how 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 much play there is by this by the spring and it, these carbons have uh, plenty of life left I think about 80 percent so I'm not I'm not worried about the uh, carbons are replacing them um, these contacts here eventually end up uh, inside the fixture where you screw, uh, push in the light bulb and the uh, buttons on the contacts end up against these uh, fixtures right there. So I will take a little bit of a, a brasso if I shake it up. There's always some inside the lid there. So I'll take a fresh Q-tip and get a little bit on there. And just, just rub it on here. Rub it in. I just want to polish those a little bit so they make a nice clean contact with the with the light bulb I'll be putting in. It's real, real quick to do. You could also do this with the Dremel. You just want to be a little bit careful here because these are kind of the wires wrapped around them and then soldered. So you don't want to uh, 
you know, break break the solder joint or anything. Let's, let's take a look at this. I'm going to support them good so I can polish them off here. Polish them up. So those those are cleaned up good now. So so that didn't that didn't take too long to clean up this uh, motor. On the on the three, four, five, and six hundred series where they have a a lot different motor that's in a housing, um, I take those out and uh, clean them up the same way. Clean up all the housing and the contacts. They have um, on the end of the motor these uh, brass pins like that and uh, you you can go in there with a crud cutter too uh, if you look in there and you see green and black stuff it's you know it's a bad sign these these are good I clean them a little bit but it, they don't take a lot of uh, a lot of cleaning here we're good so what I have to do now is I, I have to rearrange this a little a little bit to be able to start fishing the motor in. So let me get that set up and then I'll come back and I'll continue uh, the Okay, uh, if you remember my other video, I showed you in here before how clean it was, and then I put a light coating of oil on everything, and it looks real good in there. Bef before you put the motor and stuff back in, if you have any more cleaning or any oil touch-up that you want to do or anything that you missed, this is the time to do it because you'll have the easiest access, you know. But I've, I've already done all that, so I want to start getting this back in. Eventually, the motor's going to be mounted in there like that. And the switch has to come inside and come out here. The plug has to go inside and the lip come up here on the end. And this has to make its way all the way back towards the middle of the machine. So that's that's the part that's usually the hassles. Getting this, putting the light fixture all back together, and and getting it down in the real tight area that it goes. But to, to put this in, I usually just you know start working its way in here. Um, I know it goes on on this side. Uh, I guess the front side of that switch so I make sure that it's below that arm and then it's gonna come out the top here and it's gonna go see how did that go did it go up over that or under I think it went. Let me try that. Is it gonna? Because I know there's a clamp over here for this part, and there's a clamp that goes down here. This is where taking the picture is is helpful. I'm pretty sure it goes over the top of this, so I'm gonna I'm gonna start it out that way and take a look at it. I've got to sneak this between the wall of the machine and the cam stack. I'm just going to try and real gently get it through there. Can I get it over there and up? No. No, I see what, I see what I'm hitting here. It's right in here. That cord's got to come and lay right in that clamp. Pretty tight fit. Let me try it again here. See if I can 
make it uh, yeah there we go all right move this a little closer Put this in here a little better this clamp later will hold this protective part there's a plastic sleeve over the cord and the light fixture has got to end up in this little space right there so let's get this up here and it looks like I've taken the right path because there's a clamp here and there'll be another clamp up here so the wire will go under the, the cam and it'll go above the left center right position arm and it'll come under the lever for stitch length so that's looking pretty good and then the I don't know if you remember this this fit in here to hold the to hold the and then it switch is going to go like that which is going to stick out the front of the machine like that. So this, I can untwist it a little bit, needs to be pushed back in there. Grommet will be held by a bracket above the switch. More slack there like that starting to starting to look pretty good there See if I can start sticking some of this wire in here maybe I can get this out like that then I want to check my come on out doesn't doesn't quite want to come out enough to put the washer I remember I took a washer off of this but the little tube with the threads that holds the switch came out farther than this before so let me kind of see what I'm there That's looking better. I don't think I'll put the, it's, it's in there pretty good. I don't think I'll put the washer in there yet. Uh, if that keeps popping out, I guess I will. And here is the, Where the motor is going to end up going in here. I wonder if I could get a little more light on this somehow. I definitely need a bigger workbench, don't I? <laughs> Oop. any kind of all right so in the in the parts that I took out before was this uh, nylon post that fits up into here is held in place by a set screw and it's lowered into here to support the top of the motor 
and that's got to flex a little, you know, slide a little bit like that because of the uh, adjusting washer down here for the belt. So I'm thinking what I'm going to do, if I remember the last time was I loosen that set screw back out and I got this up in there and since it adjusts it seems like I pushed it up out of the way into that area and then just tighten it enough to hold it so once I got the motor in there I could loosen that and drop it right back down in there so the motor is basically going to sit in there yep. that way. So I'm I'm going to turn this on the side now because I I'm pretty sure that's going to give you a better view of in there and. Uh, Yeah, so let's see if I can kind of pre put get the motor back in here. I've got to temporarily put that plug in there and jockey this around. That's not going well. How about if I get that bracket started towards the bottom of the machine? How I finally got that motor in there was to angle it through with this bracket and a back into this area in there so I could get the top of the motor inside then I could move it towards the top of the machine and move it the um, move the bracket back out here where it has to go. So I'm happy I got that accomplished. What I want to do while I'm in here is this plug that's out of place. This part here has got to come back up here. Um, To be to be screwed in. That's not working good. So I want to take that and move it so the screw positions will come back up here and come right into that slot. When you get the switch into the position here, you take your screw. If you're looking at it from the back, it's the left side. It's towards the front of the machine. The other screw hole, like I said, is to put the cover plate on. And I put some oil on the screw before I put it in there. And I think I'll finger tighten it. I just don't want that uh, to keep slipping back inside there. So got the motor in a pretty good position here. I think I might I might um, I might slide that tube into the top of the motor. I didn't look at the service guide this morning. Sometimes they give you little tips like that, like do the bottom part first then slide it into the top, but I think since I'm here I'm going to see if I can't get that slid back out slid back in there like that so that it'll support the top of the motor there snug that up might have to uh, readjust it later then I've got to come down here 
And if you remember when we took the big screw out and the concentric adjustment washer and the spacer washer off of that bracket on the bottom of the motor. I see this, I'm just going to touch this up a little bit here. Put a dab of oil on there. So it's got to go something like this. Um, this will go like that. And then that's going to go through the motor bracket here. This will go on the back side as a spacer and then the screw will go into the actual frame of the sewing machine. So if I can get this uh, started in here see if that going to go inside there so the edge of that's up against the bracket well the motor already slipped off the top so that was kind of a waste of time it slipped off that pin so I would suggest then that you do this end first and then later we'll get the pin I know I'm blocking your view but I got to get that screw started into that hole a little bit then I can line up the washers oh I think I got it nope oh, I don't think I did if I go go in here and maybe if I drive that screw from the back end I can line it up easier now. Mm -hmm. That eccentric turn towards the motor. Get that washer slid back on the end of that screw between the bracket and this the machine body it feels like I have the tip of that screw is in there so let me see if I can get it started because then I can Oh boy, then I could give you a better view, I think. Okay, there. Whee! All right. So, you've got your bolt, the adjusting washer, the bracket that's coming from the motor, the support bracket, then your spacer, and then the body. And that's where the screw goes. So, if we come back to this end now you see that that motor slipped right off of that plastic pin so I'm going to loosen that again and see if I can't push that pin into the hole in the top of that motor bracket like that now I've got it through there. That supports the top of the motor. So this this is all a, a bracket that
comes from both ends and comes up and goes over around the pulley. So let's snug that up. And I can I can stand it upright then and I can show you uh, maybe a good good view of it here. So it's still loose because I haven't tightened that down below. But there's your pulley where the belt will come, go around the hand wheel. Here's your uh, electrical plug that's pulled through the space and screwed in. We've got the washers and the bottom of the bracket mounted. So sometimes we're, we're going to uh, dress up these wires a little bit. So we don't want the wires to be anywhere near any moving part. That's why it had in that part up, up here <clears throat> the little grommet that slides into the bracket for the switch. And then there's a clamp and a screw that go about there but you have to put it on when you put that plastic face plate. Then there is another uh, clamp up here. So that's going to keep the wire against the side of the machine and away from the cams and all the levers. And then here's the end that we're going to rebuild the light fixture around and get the light fixture down into this area. And that's the that's always been the tricky part for me because that darn bracket that holds it, you know, it, it ends up in the in the machine like that. And this this can be kind of manipulated around, you know, and and put in there and it ends up with a with a screw holding uh, holding that to the machine. But this this part doesn't bend. This part is a the hassle to to get in there and jockey around and so forth. So we've got all the electrical. We cleaned it. We've got them mounted. <clears throat> I think I'll go ahead and. Tighten this up. I'm not going to put the other clamps on the wire until I get that light fixture rebuilt and put in there. But I will. Um, I will go ahead and snug this part up a little bit and make sure that the. Washers are all aligned together because the protrusion from the adjustment washer will fit into the spacer as it goes through the motor bracket. So that's a lot better. When we go to put, put the uh, belt back on, then if you remember that that washer is how we move the motor closer or farther from the hand wheel to adjust the tension on the belt. So we're all set for that. Let's see, I wonder if I should... I think I, don't, I, think I can put this, if you remember this little plastic washer that held the switch. I think I'm going to put it back on because it's independent of the cover plate up here. So I should be able to just put it on and uh, tighten it up. I liked it. I liked it better in the other models when all this kind of stuff was steel or, or aluminum or some kind of metal. It just seemed like they'd last longer. I mean the parts are still 
very well engineered and designed. I guess it was just after World War II and the Japanese, there was about 40 or 50 companies making machines and clones of Singer and everybody else. So the competition got pretty stiff. So in order to compete and save money, I think that's when they started going more and more to uh, plastic and electronics. And I think that was, to me, the demise of a good Singer sewing machine. Uh, maybe the new ones are fine. I don't know. I, I haven't ev ever used anything after 19, about 1970, <clears throat> except that one machine my wife bought. But anyway, um, after we get the light rebuilt and installed, then I'll go back on those uh, clamps and dress up this wire a little bit more and be sure it's flat and so forth. So I guess we'll have to tackle that light fixture next time. But that's the wiring harness cleaning and reinstalling the switch and the motor and running the wire up there in preparation. Whoa, thank you. Stay tuned for the light fixture reinstall in the next part. Take care.